All right, uh, welcome once again, everybody, to the Praise and Worship course. Priya, I'm doing very well. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, thank you all for connecting, for joining in. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, can someone just uh, start us off with a word of prayer? Anyone, just go for it. I'll go. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you under the name of Jesus. We thank you for this beautiful day and for the amazing class that we're about to have. God, we thank you for creating us, for loving us beyond imagination, for giving your life for us as we learn everything on this praise and worship class. Let us apply it in our life and let our light shine brighter and let us make heaven crowded. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Some pressure there. For the amazing class we're going to have. If it's less amazing, please forgive me. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. So, <laughs> all right, guys. Um, well, uh, we've been we've been in this chapter uh, on flowing prophetically in praise and worship. Uh, we started off by understanding the connection between music and worship, and then the prophetic. How the connection between the prophetic and music and worship, right? Uh, we went through a couple of scriptures. Actually, let me go ahead and share the screen. So, um, right, uh, so just a quick recap. So we are all on the same page. Uh, music and worship, the connection there. Uh, music plays an integral part in worship. It's one of the tools that uh, God's given us to use to worship, right? It's not the only tool, uh, you know, which is which we, we are very clear through uh, the duration of this course. We've learned that um, just music alone is not worship, but music is a part of worship. It's another aspect that is uh, used uh, widely and popularly, uh, you know, in one aspect of worship, right? Um, and so we and we see that in multiple scriptures. Psalm one fifty uh, is is a perfect example in many ways. Um, and then we see the connection between the music and the prophetic. How Samuel prophesies after anointing Saul, saying that he will encounter a group of people, a group of prophets, uh, who will be playing instruments, right, music. Uh, with different kinds of instruments, and they will be prophesying. And then that scripture goes on to say that Saul also began to prophesy when he encounters them, right? Um, another passage in Second Kings chapter 3, verse 14 to 16, we see Elisha asking for a musician, bring me a musician, uh, right? And as he started playing, the Lord came upon him. Uh, another classic example that comes to our, uh, my mind, at least, uh, which we all know of, is uh, um, when, uh, when Saul is oppressed uh, by an evil spirit. Uh, you know, he asks, uh, David goes and plays the harp for him. And then as David, is played, uh, David plays the harp, uh, you know, Saul is relieved. Um, so there's another connection there. Um, and so it was in the it is in the tabernacle of David where we see uh, the music, worship, and the prophetic coming together, right? And we very briefly saw in First Chronicles chapter twenty five, in the very uh, in the very first verse, it says David set apart, right, uh, the sons of Heman, and uh, and Asaph for the ministry of prophesying. Okay, and then we go through that entire chapter. We see how uh, uh, they worshipped. They would sing. They would play their instruments. Uh, but it was all for the ministry of prophesying. There, were, I'm sure there were so many prophetic songs that were being born, spontaneous songs. Uh, uh, and we also very briefly uh, looked at the background of the tabernacle of David. Right when David was anointed, when he became the king, finally. Um, you know, of, of Israel and Judah at that time, uh, for almost 70 years, the Ark of the Covenant, which was the symbol of the presence of God for almost 70 years, was not with them. It was not in Jerusalem. Even when Saul was made king, uh, 
it did not occur to him to go after the presence of God, to pursue it and to bring it back because it was a prized jewel. It was a crown jewel uh, for the Israelites, the Ark of the Covenant, right? It was very precious. Um, so on the day in First Samuel chapter 4, as we read uh, last week, on the day uh, the people of Israel lost the Ark, 30,000 men died. Right? 30,000 men died. Um, and... Um, the, the high priest Eli dies, uh, and his daughter-in-law dies, uh, and uh, and so many things. It was just not a. It, it was absolutely not a good day. Um, and then when David becomes king in Second Samuel chapter six, when he goes after, when he decides to bring the ark back, he takes thirty thousand men along with him. Right. Um. So. We went through that background. Uh, so the ark of the covenant was taken into the battle, and we see that David retrieving it. Um. And, and we see how he organized worship in the tabernacle, how he uh, set up the tabernacle, right? And one of the important things that we saw was, although David was living in the old covenant, he constantly seems like, seemed like he lived off the new covenant. Uh, you know, it's the, it's the prophetic uh, of the anointing on him uh, must have helped him tap into see that, hey, the greatest law is the law of love. That is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. David lived that kind of life in the old covenant. And now that should be an amazing reminder for us right now, right? Uh, the church in living in the new covenant of what a privilege it is, right? That we have, um, that we can boldly enter the throne room of God. Right, to his throne of grace. Uh, Bible says the righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. And we have access to that. And David tapped into that in the old covenant itself. And we see how he went ahead and set it up. Right, So we see that 288 prophetic singers were there, 4,000 musicians, um, gatekeepers. Uh, um, there's one character uh, that I like as you say, he's, his name is uh, Obed Edom, okay? Um, in your personal Bible studies and whatnot, uh, right, if you do that, uh, do a character study on this person called Obed Edom, right? Um, he is what I'd like to call a minor character with a major impact. Uh, you know, there's so much that we can learn of his life, right? Uh, if, if just to give a gist, when uh, when David goes to uh, bring the ark the second time, uh, you know, because it slips off the ark and he doesn't know what to do, the the ark of the covenant was kept in the house of Obed Edom for three months, and then David hears the news saying, Obed Edom, everything in his house is being blessed, is flourishing and whatnot. Uh, just to give a gist, right? Um, and then David goes and brings the Ark of the Covenant back. One of the interesting interesting thing that you will find in the scriptures is that Obed Edom did not get comfortable living with the blessings of the Lord. When David came back to take the Ark of the Covenant back, Obed Edom went after the Ark of the Covenant, went after the presence, uh, basically. So uh, that's more to his character, and I would encourage you to all to do that. Uh, you know, in in the in how beautifully he uh, pursues the presence of God. Okay, so. So many things happening in the tabernacle of David, guys. So many things. So it is in this place we see the music, worship, and the prophetic all coming meeting together, right? Um, so now we have, now that we have, you know, that understanding, uh, let's look at uh, the prophetic word, right? Before we start talking about the prophetic worship, uh, just we'll understand just a little bit about prophetic. I'm sure. Uh, I'm not sure if it's in this course that you guys are doing have a course on uh, the prophetic uh, I'm, I'm not sure okay but anyways we're not going to go too deep uh, you know as such in this chapter but just adjust you know briefly um, uh, which one the uh, you mean Obedido? Yeah, in, se yeah. in second Samuel uh, for, after from six right you have to and he's mentioned all over the in, the, in different chapters so you just have to uh, look for it Oh, okay. In Second Samuel, yeah. Sure, thank you. No problem, no problem. But you'll find. Uh, but I think I should have some references. I'll probably email them to you. 
Sure, sure. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Um, so now let's just take some time in understanding uh, the prophetic word, okay? Uh, what it does, uh, the nature, the foundations of it, okay? And why is it important, right? Um, the foundation of a prophetic word, right, is from the Holy Spirit. Let's get that right. Okay, uh, it's, it's something that doesn't happen when, because someone circle puts one wand, uh, you know, and sp star sprinkles all over it, something happens now. Um, the foundation of, of the prophetic word, of this, ev ev everything related to the prophetic is connected to the Holy Spirit. Our dependency, uh, our leaning, uh, everything related to the prophetic should be, uh, you know, from the Holy Spirit. Why? Simply because uh, if you read actually in First Corinthians, I think First Corinthians, <clears throat> um, yeah, First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10. It says, But God has revealed it to us by his spirit. Okay, God has revealed there is a revelation okay uh, there's a seeing there's a knowing there's a knowledge so god has revealed who is passed on this uh, revelation of the knowledge to us by his spirit the spirit searches all things even the deep things of god okay so it is the holy spirit that communicates the heart and the mind of God to our spirit. Okay, it's very important to notice that to our spirit. Now, uh, everything related with the prophetic, you know, in some sense, there's an element of hearing the voice of God, right? Uh, hearing God's voice. Um, and we get asked this question um, not just by the young people, but uh, you know, all age groups is how do I hear the voice of God? Right, uh, and that question is kind of related to uh, how do I know the will of God? Yeah, um, so if I can hear His voice, I will know His will, isn't it? Uh, but what is very important? I mean, and this point might come up again, and uh, you know, uh, much later. Uh, forgive me if I'm repetitive. He communicates the heart and mind of God to our spirit. God is spirit, right? And when we and I've made this mistake of hearing, trying to hear him with my physical ears. You know, when we don't hear something, like if the connection is not good, uh, you know, or if we can't hear another person who's talking, you go closer, right? And you press this thing, you know, you try like, hey, what are you saying now? You know, um, how many times I've done that? Uh, is it only me? <laughs> you know, it's try to listen to his voice, like, what do you think, God? I can't hear you. You know? Um, but in but in all reality, he speaks and ministers to our spirit. Right? Uh, because he is a spirit. And so, um, and how many times when, when, you know, I'm not sure, again, if it's just me, when you're just vacuuming the house or when you're not, being too spiritual, cleaning the fan or something. Uh, you don't even necessarily have to be worshipping or thinking. It's like a thought or a word that comes in. It's like, hey. like, you know, you know that God is doing something inside of you. He's speaking. He's saying something to you. And you know it, isn't it? I hope someone can relate to it, uh, to what I'm saying. But, um, right? So the Holy Spirit communicates the heart and mind of God because he searches the heart and mind of God um, to our spirit. Okay, that's the fundamental, that's the first brick that we lay down in this foundation. Okay, if that is not right, don't even bother. Um, so, yeah. Okay, and now uh, just a few examples of uh, how a prophetic word is can be released, okay, in, diff in so many different ways. And uh, what you see here are the seven things are not an exhaustive list, right? So for, but uh, 
these are the most well known uh, in a manner of how god kind of communicates um, you know so a prophetic word is released as an impression in our hearts um, so and as i walk through each of this example uh, if there's anybody uh, in the class uh, you know in which how you know if god's spoken to you uh, through an impression of a you know of a word uh, in you it's just oh uh, feel free to raise your hand or share um, you know where a prophetic words was being with an imp through an impression uh, you know in your heart for example uh, I mean there's a lot of examples but uh, the one I very clearly remember is uh, for a, a worship leader who was leading worship once i had this very clear impression like a strong and you know it sometimes it's just god is that god is going to release a new song in him and uh so that was one of the impressions so uh, uh, as something like that uh you know as has anyone experienced something like that and would you like to share that Uh, Pastor, uh, I uh, would like to share something. Uh, a few years back, uh, when I started driving, I was um, very scared to take the car and uh, go. Uh, so uh, I, on Monday, there was no other means to go, and I had to take the car. So I was uh, very confused what to do. So then uh, immediately, uh, the word of God came. Do not look at the giants. So, I mean, uh, that was clearly telling me that, uh, I mean, you have to depend on God and do do not look at the circumstances. So right. that day, uh, that was the first day I started driving, and it was an amazing experience. Amen. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that, Priya. It's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Estivia, go ahead, please. Uh, yeah, uh, what Priya said, I, I can completely relate to what <laughs> she meant. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you for sharing that, Priya. And uh, I would love to say, like, uh, for me, uh, as sometimes uh, when I do, you know, quiet time, uh, some uh, some thoughts just come to me and I just write them down. Uh, sometimes it becomes an article or, you know, um, uh, sometimes it becomes a poem or, mm -hmm. yeah. So it is not like I'm trying my, on my own to do that or I'm you know, um, putting my own effort into it. I know it is the Holy Spirit speaking. Um, and it comes uh, in a way that I can connect with different scriptures. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, I just love that. Uh, when it uh, happens, because I know it's not me. Yeah, yeah. it's the Holy Spirit, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. Yes, uh, Avadesh. Yeah, Avadesh, uh, you raised your hand. You wanted to share? Yeah, uh, sir, uh, uh, sometime uh, I'm worshipping with uh, our believers. So I'm doing ministry too. So in the worship time, sometimes uh, something happening in or uh, in my body, na, no? uh, in different parts uh, like pain and uh, different kind of uh, <clears throat> uh, sense uh, is happening in my body. So that time I am asking our viewers, is uh, any uh, uh, is any there anyone is there. Uh, uh, any have problem in their body in this part in this part they uh, they are saying yes then that time also i'm praying for uh, praying for them and they are getting well oh uh, that's wonderful yeah thanks avesh thank you for sharing that uh yeah so that's uh more of like the last point that's mentioned there is uh, the physical sensations right um so uh, 
we can just go through the, all of them, you know, and because they are also kind of interlinked in so many ways, right? Uh, like for like what we start off by talking about an impression, and there's another point. Uh, the sixth one is a, a word or a sentence or a paragraph uh, or a quickening of the scriptures. So another thing again might come back later is um, the word, right? Uh, in the New Testament, there are two Greek words that's used for the word. One Again, we all know that is the logos, right? Which is the spoken, which is the word of God, right? And that's what's mentioned in John one when we read, "In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God." The Greek word used there is the logos, right? Um, this is referring, pointing towards Jesus. Um, and then there's the rhema word of God, right? So this word logos, uh, what we have right now, is for everybody. It's it's for the Christians all over the world. It's universal, isn't it? And then there's the rhema word of God, which is spoken for that circumstance, that situation, right? A classic example is Luke chapter 5, verse 5. Uh, you know, when Peter says, um, the context is, you know, we've tried catching fish all, all night, not we've, we didn't catch anything, but because you have said so, we will do it. What happened? Jesus spoke to that very situation, right? The logos release the rhema word of God. So, um, and uh, that's something beautiful, right? Uh, and and how many times we read the Bible and we keep reading, we keep reading until we, you know, he's, he releases the rhema word of God for our lives, for that situation, for that day, for that moment, right? Um, so, uh, and I think that's also related to, the, to an impression uh, or to a knowing on the inside, a word or a sentence or a paragraph, right? Or uh, a picture. A picture is something very different. Uh, now, there was a time when uh, a, a, a worship time, the worship leader, and I was playing the drums, um, he turned to me and he said, uh, I want you to play, release something prophetically. Um, and uh, I was like, what is this? What do I do? <laughs> right? Uh, that was the like, you know, first experience. Uh, but... Uh, but I trusted the worship leader because, uh, uh, you know, by then the worship leader had earned my trust in his, by his life and knew that he was very sensitive to hearing the voice of God. So he wouldn't be asking me to do it if he did not hear it in the first place. So I trusted that he heard the voice of God. Uh, and then I, again, you know, just depending on the Holy Spirit. And um, so there was this, uh, like a picture of a sunrise. So I was, as I was playing, uh, this is a picture of a sunrise. So, and then later got the interpretation saying that it's a new beginning. Uh, it's a new, there's a new start, uh, you know, um, that's, that's happening. So, uh, yeah, anybody, you know, it, uh, you know, where you've seen pictures, uh, you know, God's spoken to you uh, that way. Yes, Divya. Uh, yeah, as you said, sunrise, and suddenly I was reminded of, uh, uh, it is not an impression, uh, but I literally saw the rainbow, and um, and it was coming repeatedly for me, uh, So and God reminded me of, I think it is Isaiah 42, 19, see I'm doing a new thing, I make streams in the desert, um, springs in the wasteland that was and it was very you know uh, i had to you know hold on to it that yeah. time uh so yeah that that is that is one where i had a literal you know uh, physical i'm seeing um otherwise <clears throat> like we had a session in our church as well where we taught us to uh, when we meditate on uh the word of god we can you know draw pictures right about what we are uh, reading. So right. sometimes um, God uh, just shows me like uh, either like a sheep uh, following mm. him, following Jesus. Right. So I just draw it. Yeah. And yeah, sometimes, you know, uh, a flock of sheep uh, yeah. just following this and you following Jesus's footsteps. Right. Yeah. yeah, so... Um, Yes, certain uh, things and always uh, sunlight. Sometimes hmm. it just gets very brighter. 
Thanks, Divya. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else uh, who's encountered, uh, I mean, where God's released a prophetic word through pictures? Um, I've seen clouds uh, while worshipping. Um, um, so this is during a moment in time of worship. I just felt like, uh, you know, the presence of the Lord is manifesting as a cloud. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and we read that in the scriptures so many times, isn't it? Like how the cloud uh, just, uh, just like the manifest presence of God uh, in, in the book of Chronicles and even in Exodus that he led people uh, as a pillar of cloud by day, right? Awesome. Yeah, so you, you see, I mean, all of this can lead to one thing, to the next thing, right? Uh, they're also intellect, right? It can start with an impression and then lead to a word, and then can lead to a physical sensation, then that can lead to a picture. And uh, so there's like no proper flow chart. You know, we can't put this in a box and say, this is prophetic, this is, <laughs> you know, um, it's dangerous to do that. Um, but uh, as we've said, you know, these are just, uh, you know, a few examples of how a prophetic word can be released through you and can come to you as well, right? Um, so, yeah, uh, just to go through them once again, it's an impression, a flash of information. Um, that, that's another interesting thing, a flash of information. Um, uh, it, see, there is this uh, connection between uh, what we say as the word of knowledge and the prophetic, right? Um, see, I'll just share something in my limited knowledge of what I understand, the, the slightest difference between the word of knowledge and the prophetic because I think it's important for us to just understand, uh, you know, just have an idea at least. Um, this is just my understanding, guys. So uh, if I'm not right, please forgive me. So word of knowledge is something, is is what leads to the prophetic. You know, it starts off so many times. It's It can, you know, it doesn't have to, but it starts off with that and that leads to the prophetic. So word of knowledge is something just like what it sounds. It's... Uh, a word of knowledge, that's something that you already know. It could be a, you know, a, a date of birth or a phone number or your address, uh, right, or the color of your car. Uh, I, I remember one time where uh, my car needed fixing, and it was just really bad. This <laughs> is a very bad season, uh, you know, because the expenses was really bad, and I was very mentally disturbed, exhausted. But I also had to lead worship <laughs> uh, that Sunday. Uh, and I remember uh, Pastor Nancy, uh, you know, it's like, someone here has a red car. I was like, yep, that's me. <laughs> you know, so that's, that's a word of knowledge. Uh, it, it said, uh, and she was like, God is saying, don't give up. I, I, I'm i watching you. I'm seeing you. I'm with you. Um, and that was just a beautiful way. You know, it, it was comforting, isn't it? To know that God, hey, okay. God is seeing, right? So what happened there is that she said, somebody here with a red car. Now, my car was red, you know, so I knew that. So that's, that's the word of knowledge. And then she would go on to release a prophetic word. It's like, hey, God is going to be a provider. Uh, he is with you, um, right? Um, so that's uh, like a flash of information. It's just a uh, word of knowledge that can lead to release of the prophetic um, so many times, right? It can happen... Um, directly as well. Uh, like um, this is one time I remember. This is someone uh, you know, like being addicted, uh, right to 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 porn, uh, and this was again one on one, and I felt like you know how. God just releasing, you know, saying that you are not that. You are not what you think you are. Uh, you are righteous in me, you know. So uh, so it can be direct as well. So, uh, but yeah, I hope I'm making sense. Sorry if I've confused you. <laughs> let's, uh, let's move on. Um, so, but what does this prophetic word do? Why is it important, uh, you know, to depend? Uh, prophetic word. Point one brings edification, exhortation, and comfort. 
right? Uh, in First Corinthians 4, 14, 3, we see, but he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men. Right? It brings edification and exhortation. And then we see it reveals God's plans and purposes. It reveals God's plan and purposes. Uh, we can uh, go to Luke chapter 1. Uh, the scripture is, uh, the reference is mentioned in your notes. Okay, let's see. Luke chapter 1, we can look at verse 67. And then we go to 76, okay? So uh, just look at that verse 67 there, okay? Luke chapter 1, verse 67, it says, His father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied. Okay, you see how, again, being filled with the Holy Spirit is key there. Let's come down to verse 76 to 79. It says, And you my child will be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him, to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins. Right? Because of the tender mercy of our God in which the rising sun will come to us from heaven. Rising sun. Strange. Uh, to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the path of peace. Okay. Um, it's a classic example of uh, God's word revealing plans and purposes in our lives. But again, the foundation there was Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit. Right. Uh, that can be another session uh, altogether on being filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, so once again, a good reminder for us that Holy Spirit is the fundamental, is, is the foundation being filled with them to move in the prophetic. All right, let's go on. Third, a prophetic word stirs up and causes us to move in faith and in warfare. Right? What does it do? It stirs us up, okay? It encourages us, right? It, it edifies, it empowers us, it causes us to move, okay? Um, so a prophetic word will always cause you to get into action it will get you going it will get you to do right uh, and we see that in in the logos word of god right in the beginning was the word and the word was with god right and the word was god right and the word became flesh right the word became flesh it moved okay it was word it was word in action it became action so st the prophetic word of god causes us to take move okay in faith and warfare so the reference given there in first timothy chapter 1 verse 18 is this charge i commit to you son timothy according to the prophecies previously made concerning you that by them you may wage the good warfare right um and um I, I heard once, uh, I hope I can paraphrase this, Bill Johnson says this, uh, you know, this, he gives this analogy. He says, okay, a prophetic word is where God goes into your future, right, uh, in the plan that he has prepared for you. He picks that promise, a piece of that, you know, a glimpse of that future. He comes to the present and he releases that to encourage you, to motivate you, to push you, to edify you, to comfort you and say, hey, this is what I prepared for you, and I want you to press on towards that, no matter how hard your present is. Okay, so it stirs us up. It causes us to move towards the goal, towards the plan, towards the destiny that God has prepared for us. Right? Uh, next one, let's go. A prophetic word provides motivation and strength to carry out God's purposes and plans okay uh, it's just connected to the example that i just gave okay prophetic pro the word provides motivation and strength to carry out god's purposes and plans and so many times he reminds us isn't it um and uh i hope you have this habit of writing down the prophecies uh you know released over your life uh, making a note of it or recording it uh and whatnot um 
because I, I I have to share this. I'm sorry I'm sharing so many of my personal experiences, but I don't know how else to put this point across. Um, there was a time where we uh, we had this worship team meeting, right? Um, we would meet in a church office for just time of prayer and worship. And there was a time. Um, so what we do is we have an individual. So say 20 people, we have one person come stand in the middle. We all circle around that person and start praying uh, and then start releasing uh, the, a prophetic word uh, over that individual. And uh, so my turn came and I was in the middle and everybody started praying. And then uh, there was this time and I started recording it on my phone. I was like, okay, I don't care how I look. I'm going to hold up my phone. I'm going to record this. Um, and everybody started releasing prayers over my life. And, and uh and one of the words that Pastor Jakes, uh, Jay Kumar, we call him Pastor Jakes, okay? Um, Pastor Jay Kumar released a word saying, uh, saying, don't take, uh, he said, I see a picture of a ship. Uh, and he said, don't take your handle off the, what is that? He, it's not steering wheel <laughs> for the ship. <laughs> he says, don't take your hands off yet. Uh, you know, hold on to it in the storm. Um, and so I recorded that. And it was after a year, right? After a year later, I just went and hit it, you know. Uh, and I did not even think that it would be uh, relevant to my situation, my circumstance or what I was going through. But I was just listening to it. And it, it made so much sense to what I was going through, uh, to the decisions that I had to make of the things that I had to let go and not let go. Um, so, and what did it do? A prophetic word, which was almost released a year ago, uh, it gave me motivation and strength, right? To carry out God's purpose and plans, isn't it? Um, so just being dependent on the rhema word of God is so important, uh, so, you know, so beautiful. Um, and, and if you remember in the life of Abraham, uh, God tells Abraham, Take your son, okay. Take uh, take all these things. Go to the place that I will show you. That means God had not yet shown him, uh, you know, where to go. But Abraham was obedient. He took that first step of faith, and as and that's what prophetic does is when we are obedient and when we keep taking that step of faith, risk, uh, you know, is spelled as faith, or faith is spelled as risk in you know. Um, and God starts revealing, you know, step by step, step by step, uh, and whatnot. Okay, so that's what it does. Point four: prophetic words provides motivation and strength for us to carry out God's purpose and plans. Uh, the prophetic word releases God's power, healing, deliverance, and breakthroughs. It releases God's power, healing, deliverance, and breakthrough. Uh, right? Um, there's one scripture that I. Um, Yeah, see the way you share, praising God for his goodness. Uh, God is such a good father. Yeah, he prepares us beforehand, even before the storms. Yeah, yes, he does. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in Revelation chapter 19, verse 10. Okay, Revelation chapter 19, verse 10. Now, we again heard this. It says, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Okay, the testimony. What is it? Okay, everything, anything recorded, a written record, uh, or a known record of what Jesus has done. Okay, that means this word. When we read the Gospels and we see that everything that it is done. Do you guys know this book is prophetic in nature? Right, and then you know. Uh, so it says. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy, right? Um, and we see here that it releases God's power, healing, deliverance, and breakthrough. So what happens? For example, um, the word testimony, it simply means to do it again. Right? We've, we've heard that song by Elevation, right? Do it again. I've seen you move. I've seen you move the mountains. And I believe that you will do it again. 
So what are we actually declaring is, I've seen you move the mountains. That's a testimony. That's a written record of what Jesus has done. Right? And I believe that you will do it again. And it's said that when we release of what God has done, what Jesus has already done, it is said that we are creating an atmosphere for him to do it again. So anybody who is sharing in a testimony, right? Uh, and how many times I've, I've heard stories of a person sharing a particular testimony and because of that testimony, uh, that atmosphere was created for God to do the testimony again, to do that healing, to do, to do that deliverance and that breakthrough again. And how a person, you know, who just listening to the testimony claimed it for them and they were, and they received that healing or that breakthrough, right? So the testimony of Jesus is prophetic, right? And that releases God's power for healing, deliverance and breakthroughs. Right? Are you, you guys with me? Yes, Pastor, we're yeah. with you. All right. Thanks, Sid. Very emphatic. Thank you. Uh, right. Um, and then uh, going on to the sixth point. Oh, I hope I'm in the right place. Yep. Okay. Um, the prophetic word brings correction and restoration. Um, we see that in the story of uh, King David and Prophet Nathan, right? Uh, uh, in, in, so in, in everything that a prophetic word does that we've learned so far, it also brings correction and restoration. Um, when David was, uh, you know, acting like everything was fine, nothing had happened between him and Bathsheba, like, he, you know, like he did not orchestrate the murder or the killing of Uriah. Uh, then he's like, okay, you know, you can't go on like this. God's like, he sends a prophet. Then says like, okay, you know, what you did was not right. But with that, with the correction, there is all, there also comes restoration, right? Um, so a prophetic word brings correction and restoration. A prophetic word causes conviction and repentance. A prophetic word causes conviction and repentance. An example used, to, used here is the example of the Samaritan woman. Right? As Jesus is releasing the words of knowledge and as he's being prophetic, uh, you know, it's causing, it's convicting this woman. It's, it's causing her to change uh, you know, her lifestyle, you know. Uh, one, one, the example that we saw was it causes us to uh, you know, take, uh, to move in action, to do something about it, isn't it? So that's exactly what this point is about, right? It causes us, uh, it causes conviction and repentance. It gets you to do something. Right? A prophetic word will always get you to do something. And uh, finally, the prophetic word transforms nations. Um, more than anything else, uh, guys, I think uh, this is very crucial. Right? Yes, uh, it's important to receive a word of God for our situation, for circumstances. Uh, it's absolutely no negating that fact at all. But we need to desire to hear the heart of God uh, for our nation, nations, isn't it? That's what he is all about, right? Um, and for the generations and the generations to come, right? Because our God is a God of generations, right? In the Old Testament, we see he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? That's just to say he cares about the different generations. And he's the one who started this, a new nation, the nation called Israel. So, of course, he has hearts for nations, right? His hearts for different countries. So, um, the prophetic word transforms nations. Um, this should uh, encourage us to pursue the prophetic, uh, right? Um, so, we'll stop here for this session. And when we return, we'll talk about the prophetic song and how the prophetic word is, uh, you know, can be released as a prophetic song. So... Um, I will stop the presentation here and the recording.
Uh, before I just stop the recording, I hope uh, you know everybody were able to just grasp, uh, you know, uh, just the beauty, uh, the gift that we have, uh, and the gift of prophetic that's been given to us. Uh, right. I hope everybody's okay with that. I'll stop the recording now.